This is Marco Antonio, the original creator, director, and a main artist behind Mario's Madness. Let's chat with him to find out the spiciest answers to our burning questions. Hey, what up, Marco? Hey. So I think the biggest question on everyone's mind is what is the canonical ending to the mod? There's like a few different theories going around that the whole mod was like a screenplay because of the credits art that we see, or there's a tweet by you saying that boyfriend and girlfriend actually died. I gotta say that the canonical ending is in which they both die. The credit screen was all a reference originally to Mario 3. But if people want to believe that all of it was just a stage play, I, I'm not against it. Gotcha. And some people were wondering why you guys planned for the ending to be so so dark. Because not many mods actually have <laughs> boyfriend and girlfriend die at the end. There's two reasons. The first one is because, as you said, not many people do that. I wanted the finale to feel unique, feel sad in a way. The other reason is because we didn't want to make a V3. So that's why we killed them both. Interesting. Uh, a bunch of people are wondering what happens to Pico, because he seems to be like the only one alive at the very end. While we don't have any future plans for the mod, Pico is the only one that makes it out alive. He's trapped in Mario's world and he's not able to leave, so he's just wandering, finding an exit. He doesn't really die, but he's just trapped there. Gotcha. So just to confirm, there's no planned, you know, like DLC updates or anything like that. As for now, uh, no. I'm happy with how the mod came out. It has a start and an ending, and I actually don't know what to do for a B3. So I don't think it will happen, but if it does, it will be really, really small. Gotcha. What about like hotfix updates? We are planning a hotfix because there's a lot of shit that we found that was broken. We have two songs in the works right now. They're not canon, but they're like funny little songs we wanted to add since the very start. Gotcha. Are there any like notable scrapped characters or concepts that you wanted to add or highlight? Yeah, we showed quite a few on Pankaru's uh, charity stream, but I don't think I ever showed the original B2 roster we had. Originally in our plans, we had that gif of Mario rapping, but we ended up replacing it with Luigi's Day Out. We planned to adding Bowser back to B2, but we didn't have enough time, and honestly, I, I didn't quite feel it fit with the roster. We scrapped Victim 1 from the Mario ROM hack. That's like the most common one that everyone uses, and that's why we scrapped it, because it was pretty overused at this point. There's also Luigi from Super Mario Dolor. That's like a really old Mario fan game that Nintendo took down. That also was scrapped because we didn't have any interest in it. The last one was Infection Mario. Originally, Infection Mario was going to be in the place where Mr. L is in Overdue. We scrapped it because we had too many characters and we didn't feel like overbloating it. Gotcha. Was there like any mechanics that you guys scrapped? Originally in Bad Day, when he throws the poison mushroom, he was going to like change your node keybinds and you had to search in your keyboard to what it reassigned them to. We scrapped that because it felt really unfair in a way. Originally, All-Stars had you with a set amount of life and you couldn't regain any by pressing the notes. We scrapped that at the last moment because uh, we realized the song was really long and that would be pretty unfair, I'd say. Gotcha. So what would you say was like the hardest part of V2's development? In my opinion, the hardest part was getting it out. The mod went through a lot of shit. When we first announced the release date back in October 2022, we were like really stressed out. It was around April of this year. We took a really long break. And when that happened, I felt like the mod was never coming out. It was going to be canceled eventually. And after that, the leaked build came out and I really felt like shit. I thought this was the end. But we ended up pushing through and the mod came out. I'm still in disbelief that it actually came out. Yeah, so the mod was pretty close to being cancelled a few times? Yes, it was really close. Wow. What would you say like was the most challenging song in V2? Definitely All Stars. All Stars went through a lot of changes during development. It took actually a year to make. We changed up Ultra's design like four times. 
we changed up Omega's design too. We basically redid the whole song like three times. That's insane. <laughs> so the development from the whole mod, was that two years or is that just V1 to V2? So that's a year from V1 to V2, and that's two years from the mod in general. That's insane. You guys got a full ass game out before the actual F and F team. That's funny. What about you though, Marco? Like out of the entirety of Mario's Madness, what would you say is your favorite song and character? If I were to be biased, I would say Golden Land. But if I weren't, I would probably say either All Stars or Paranoia. For like most of the development, the Mr. Virtual mechanics were broken and it would freeze your computer and shit like that. We fixed that in the final version, but working with Snart, the person who made Mr. Virtual was a really fun experience. Yeah. And going back to Golden Land, for those who don't know, Marco is obviously the creator of GB. And uh, I was looking at our previous interview. You mentioned that GB had a, a third phase, and it was actually going to be the canonical ending to the mod at the time. So did those plans change? The original idea was for GB to have a whole week, but we ended up scrapping that. The second song got scrapped entirely, and the third song became what's today known as All Stars. All Stars was the original idea. Yeah, we had for GB's third phase. Gotcha. Were there any like plans for a like a good ending where BF and GF survive? One time we ambitioned a good ending of sorts. The original plan was if you full comboed all stars, it would leave you to a secret song that would be like the final final one. The point of the song was BF escaping the game without GF and he would encounter Daddy Dearest, so he would have to explain to him that, you know, Mario killed his daughter and shit. At the end of the song, Dearest would pull up a gun and shoot him, so that would be like the true, true ending. Aside from it being very disconnected from the mod itself, we didn't have enough time to do it. Gotcha. So was Daddy Dearest like a secret final boss in a way? Yeah. Interesting. What would you say was like the easiest song to make or most fun? In my personal opinion, the song we had most fun making was No Party. We also had in the team Joey Perleone, the guy who made DJ Halibu. Most of the team was a big fan of the series. I can't imagine like the code for No Party. I gotta give it props to the coders. They pulled up stuff no one could and I'm really thankful for that. We had originally plans to recreate the DS BIOS for the start of the song, but we only got to recreate the Mario Party DS intro. So uh, some people were wondering who sent the Among Us <laughs> to the door with the corrupt Mario cartridge. The Among Us guy was just a placeholder for like a mailman character, but we found it really funny and so we kept him in. And Nate, the guy who remade the cutscene, actually gave the Among Us design traits from my Sona. So technically the Among Us guy is me, I'm sending the game to them. That's hilarious. <laughs> oh, Marco, you're the true villain of the mod. <laughs> Once the mod actually released, were there any particular fan responses that surprised you or the team? Yes, they were a lot. Unbeatable um, was trending for like three days straight on Twitter. That was like a really big achievement for us and for the community in general. That's awesome. Was that like one of the last songs to make? Um, Beatable was actually one of the first songs we finished, but the song had an original version who was made by a really disgusting person. We scrapped that version and we got Red to remake it, Red alongside Wobbox and Fry. It. So that song was made in like a month. Wow, that's a pretty quick turnaround for a song like that. Yeah. So now that the development is all wrapped up, how are you doing these days? At the start of the month, I was really, really sad. Usually this time of the month is very depressing for me because it reminded me of a person I really I really loved. So when Mario's Madness actually came out, it was like the best Christmas gift I could have received. The reception the month got and how many people liked it and seeing all the fan art, I couldn't ask for any better gift. I feel fulfilled in a way. I feel happy right now. That's good, man. People like you are what make the community. We're like just so grateful to have people like you. Thank you, but I don't think I should deserve like all the credit. Every single person in the team helped make this come true. They're like really nice human beings and I, and I love each one of them. We basically achieved the impossible with the mod. 
That's great, man. Hope you all can rest now. We will. Thank you. So, is there anything like in the future that we want to let people know about that want to follow you on your journey? I do have not only my FNAF fan game, Welcome to Freddy's, which will release in not so long. I have another project cooking up. It's like my first original stuff that I will make. It's like an original game that you're making with some friends? Uh, yes. That's awesome, man. That's gonna be very exciting. Yeah. Thank you so much, Marco. The whole team of Mario's Madness. We couldn't be happier to have you guys. It's really been a pleasure. Thank you so much for having me here.